I don't know about you, but I have a complete nightmare trying to get the kids off the internet, whether it's bedtime, whether it's homework, or just coming for dinner, or even if they've just been naughty, I need to turn the internet off. So I thought, I've got Home Assistant, I've got Unify, can I bring these two things together to create an automated solution to turn the internet off when I want it to, or even turn it off on demand? I think I found a solution. If you're interested in finding out more, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. So let me talk you through what we're going to do in the video. We're firstly going to get the integration for Unify installed in Home Assistant. Once that's up and running and configured, we'll be able to start blocking some devices in Unify and I'll show you how to do that. We'll then go through and create some automation so we can block internet access for different devices at different times of day. So you can turn them off at bedtime and back on in the morning or if like me, you need to control internet access for your little horrors at different times of the day, if they won't come for dinner or do the homework, then you can just switch the internet off on demand on particular devices. Uh, so let's get into it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's get into this then and start um, with the setup. So we need to have a quick look at the documentation because there are some prerequisites that you need to adhere to. So as well as having the right hardware in place, the Unify hardware and the latest software, we need to have an admin user set up in the Unify platform that we can use to log in. Uh, so it needs to be a local admin user with specific rights. So if you flip across into your Unify admin console, you can create an admin user. So as per the documentation, I'm going to call my admin user Home Assistant and provide it with a appropriate password. And then it, we're not going to use a predefined role. We're going to go by what the documentation says and give it full network access and no OS support, which should be enough to allow us to get things set up and running properly. So full network management, non for OS. To get the Unify integration set up, we need to go into settings, integrations, add integration and look for Ubiquity, Unify network, and then we'll be asked to fill in some details on a wizard. So the IP address is the IP address of the admin console that you just connected into to create the username and password. And now I'm using that username and password that we just set up to allow Home Assistant to talk to Unify itself. And I've asked it to verify the SSL certificate. So we can submit that form. Hopefully it'll connect. And it's now asking for the devices, for where the devices it's creating to, um, where do you want them located in Home Assistant? So we can see in here all the different access points and various bits of Unify kit that I've got in my environment. So as well as the um, access gateways, I've got the various access points around the house and also a 16 port PoE switch for my access points. So we'll assign the various Unify access points and equipment to the different rooms, different locations that I have them around the house. So now that's finished, we can see that we've got some devices and services set up. So let's have a little look at that. So you can see a list of the Unify equipment that's there, the various access points, the Wi-Fi networks themselves, which we can make use of later to create our automations. So let's have a little bit of a look to see what these devices are that's been set up. So this is one of my access points that I've got set up in the back garden. So we can see um, that it's connected to home, CPU utilization, memory utilization, and it looks like there's a attribute there that's disabled um, called client. So I'm going to enable that just to see what it does. And we'll come back to that in a minute and have a look. So what else have we got? We've got my 16 port PoE switch, which I connect all of my access points into. So we can have a look at that. It looks like you can power recycle the ports. Uh, I've just enabled that port there just to see what it does. It just looks like um, firmware updates for that. So there are some configuration settings that you can have a mess around with. 
So on the Wi-Fi networks themselves, this is my main Wi-Fi network. So what you could do is if maybe you had a dedicated network for kids or something, you could disable that particular times of the day. But we'll have a look at automations a little bit later. So we can see on my guest network, there's no clients on there at the moment. And there's 11 clients on my Wi-Fi clients on my main Wi-Fi network. Okay, so now we've got the integration working. Let's see if we can get to the exciting bit and do some blocking of devices. So what I'm going to do is try and block my daughter's iPad from the internet. So you can see it's picked up a couple of devices there, but they're disabled at the moment. So what we need to do is go through the process of essentially configuring the Unify um, integration with Home Assistant so we can expose those entities uh, to Home Assistant and make sure we can block them. So what we're going to do is go into the Unify integration and what I'm going to do is select my daughter's iPad from the list. So you'll see there's lots of lots of devices being listed here and these are all the devices that are currently running in Unify that have been exposed. So I'm going to track the clients um, but I'm not going to track the wired connections and I'm not going to track the Unify devices. And the only devices I'm interested in locking down are the ones on my main Wi-Fi network. So this um, option two at the moment, I'm going to come back to that a little bit later. And you've got an option here to add a few more sensors so we can add in there a sensor for bandwidth usage and uptime sensors. Um, I'm not going to do these at the moment, but you've got the option to, to do that if you need to. So now that's finished and saved, we can flip back to the devices list and just see how that's changed things. So my daughter's iPad has now got uh, a Unify logo next to it. If we go into the device itself, we can actually see there's a control now for the network access. And there's the actual entity for controlling the network access. So what we can see then, the entity is switched on by default. I'm gonna switch it off and flip across into my Unify console. And you can see there's a red dot next to it, which means it's been blocked. So if you click in the settings on the device, it says unblock. So that device has now been blocked. So just by toggling that um, entity in Home Assistant, I've now blocked my daughter's um, iPad from accessing the internet and if I turn it back on again in Home Assistant hopefully when we go back into the Unify interface we'll be able to see that the device can then access the internet again so I need to refresh the page on both Home Assistant and the Unify console just to pick up the latest status and now it's got a green dot next to it and it's got full access to the internet again So now we've got the integration set up and configured and we've shown that we can turn or block devices when we need to. Let's create an automation so we can time when the internet goes off. So in this automation, what we're going to do is use the time as a trigger. So at 10 p.m. in the evening, I'm going to block the internet access for my daughter's device. So I'm going to use the switch setting as an action and then choose the entity, network entity that's associated with my daughter's iPad. So based on this, at 10 p.m., my daughter's iPad will be switched off, but that's probably not, not good enough because we, we need to be able to automatically switch it back on as well. So we'll enhance this uh, automation a little bit so it turns the uh, internet access back on as we need to. So what we'll do is we'll get the... Um, internet for the iPad to turn back on at 8 o'clock in the morning and what we're going to do is just add a trigger ID to each of these actions these triggers um, so we can use the trigger in the action which you'll see shortly so each trigger has a unique trigger ID that we can then use in the then do section so we're going to change the then do section to a choose option so we can make use of those two trigger IDs so depending on what time of day it is that will reflect in which option is chosen so if it's 10 p.m. at night 
it uses the switch off kids internet and that associated action to switch off the iPad will be triggered. And obviously, if you've got more than one device you want to do, which I will have, I've got um, a couple of sons as well, so their devices will be added to this eventually as well. So it's not just I'm adding one device, it's just for demonstration purposes. So the second option here then is to turn back on the device at 8 a.m. in the morning so they can do what they want. I mean, this is just an example. Obviously, you can do whatever sort of automation you want to turn the internet on and off. And I'll go on to, in a minute, how you can kind of do it on the fly as well. So if they're, if they're not being very good, you can just go into Home Assistant and click a button on a dashboard and turn off the internet. So now that's set up, I can just give that automation a, na a name and then it will run at those times given. So the other thing that, as I alluded to a few minutes ago, we want to be able to switch on and off internet connections as we go um, on the fly. You know, if they've been naughty or not coming to dinner or whatever, we can just turn off the internet. So I'm in my development dashboard here, I'm just creating a dashboard page where we can kind of demonstrate the capability here of having those entities on a dashboard so you can toggle them on and off more easily rather than having to go to the entity itself. So I'm going to locate my daughter's iPad network entity and I've added it to the dashboard. So obviously this is very, very basic, but it just gives you the idea of what you can achieve with this as well. So as well as having the automation to turn the internet on and off at a specific time, this will then give you the capability to just go into Home Assistant, click on the um, entity here shown and turn the internet off or out on as required. So obviously if you've got lots of devices and lots of kids devices you want to add in here, then you can obviously do that as well. So you can see there having that entity on the dashboard and toggling it off through the dashboard as disabled internet access for the device. So if we click on the button or the entity on the dashboard and then go back into the Unify console and just check it's turned back on again, refresh the page, we can see that the device has got internet access back. Hopefully you're in a position now where you can make use of this really good Unify Home Assistant integration for controlling internet access. It's been an absolute lifesaver for us um, rather than having those daily battles of turning the internet off and trying to get the kids off the different devices at different times of the day. We now automate it and I can control it at the touch of a button when I want somebody off the internet. Um, there's obviously a bit of a transition at first but now the kids have got used to it. They understand it's off and it's staying off. I don't get the battles, I don't get the fights anymore. So it's much, much easier. And um, although I've got lots of gray hair, hopefully I won't be getting any more. Um, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for watching it to the end. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. It does me lots of favors with the channel, obviously, and motivates me to do more videos. If you've got any suggestions, then leave them in the comments below. If you've got any feedback, leave them below as well. But appreciate your time. See you soon. Bye.